molt bon dia. Us donem la benvinguda a l'obertura de la setmana Diada Cop. Aquesta etiqueta serà important durant tota la setmana. Hashtag Diada Cop. De fet, ja la podeu començar a utilitzar a les vostres xarxes. Jo em dic Laura i us acompanyaré durant aquesta jornada, durant totes aquestes sessions que hem organitzat de dilluns a divendres, una horeta, de 11 a 12, abans de la celebració de dissabte, que vol ser aquest acte per commemorar el Dia Internacional de les Cooperatives. A l'altra banda d'aquestes pantalles hi ha l'Albert Soler, per cert, de la cooperativa La Taula, que s'encarregarà de tot el tema tècnic. Esperem que tot vagi rodat. De moment veig que estan en rodat. Bé, el 2020, ho sabeu, serà recordat sens dubte per aquesta crisi sanitària del Covid o de la Covid-19. I a les nostres mans està intentar que també recordi com un punt d'inflexió per canviar el rumb cap a una transició ecològica justa per a totes les comunitats sense deixar ningú en dret, com vosaltres mateixes heu manifestat en les diverses mesures, manifestos que heu estat redactat durant aquests mesos. Estem vivint una realitat incerta i canviant, però també una oportunitat per mostrar el lideratge del cooperativisme i els seus valors per fer front als reptes que ens planteja el futur. El lema d'aquesta Diada Internacional de les Cooperatives d'aquest any és les cooperatives i l'acció pel clima, coincidint amb l'objectiu de desenvolupament sostenible, l'ODS número 13. El Consell Assessor pel Desenvolupament Sostenible de la Generalitat de Catalunya apunta a les tres fites globals i els principals reptes per Catalunya en relació a aquest 3D ODS, que per cert podeu consultar tant a la pàgina de la Generalitat com a la pàgina de Cooperatives Catalunya, de la Copcat, cooperativescatalunya.coop. Allà trobareu tota la informació sobre aquestes fites, aquests reptes i altres documents. També, per exemple, el manifest d'acció global pel clima. A l'abril es va publicar aquest manifest, manifest d'acció global pel clima, amb un conjunt d'actuacions urgents per rellançar l'activitat de forma justa i sostenible. I al maig, el cooperativisme català, totes vosaltres, vau llançar una proposta d'un pacte de país per una economia per la vida, que amb aquest títol no pot ser més clarificador. Cada dia són més les veus que asseguren que el punt de vista climàtic no es pot desvincular del punt de vista social. I és que la natura, la naturalesa, és el medi on es produeix la vida, la de les persones i la de tots els estats vius. Per aquest motiu, des de la COPCAT, la Confederació de Cooperatives de Catalunya, en col·laboració amb la Direcció General d'Economia Social, el tercer sector i les cooperatives, hem impulsat un programa online per reflexionar sobre la temàtica d'enguany de la Diada Internacional de les Cooperatives i posar de relleu la contribució de les cooperatives catalanes, de moltes de vosaltres que esteu aquí darrere d'aquestes pantalles, en la lluita contra aquest canvi climàtic i els seus efectes. Un dels reptes més importants als quals s'enfronta el nostre planeta en aquest segle, el segle XXI des de casa o al lloc de feina, però juntes i en moviment, com diu el lema d'aquestes jornades que heu organitzat. Molt bé, doncs imagino que ja us haureu adonat que estic molt ben acompanyada. Tenim per aquí el privilegi de comptar amb la presència del president de la Confederació de Cooperatives de Catalunya, Guillem Llorenç. Bon dia, Guillem. Molt bon dia. Què tal? I també el director general d'Economia Social, el tercer sector i les cooperatives i l'autoempresa, l'entrebanco, Josep Vidal. Bon dia, Josep. Bon dia, bon dia a tothom. Gràcies a tots dos per acompanyar-nos, per ajudar-nos a obrir aquesta jornada, donar la benvinguda a totes les cooperatives i tota la gent que ens acompanya. I, si us sembla, us deixo uns minuts perquè pugueu presentar millor aquestes jornades i aquest acte. Guillem, quan vulguis. Moltes gràcies. Crec que has fet una bona introducció, ja. Benvingudes. Comencem l'inici de la setmana, del dia de cop. Gràcies, Josep Vidal, una vegada més, per acompanyar-nos amb els nostres festejos. També gràcies a totes les persones que heu fet possible aquest acte i tots els actes que durant la setmana, tal com deies, Laura, anirem celebrant cada dia fins a acabar el dissabte, dos quarts d'una, amb la lectura amb la valoració per part de la vicepresidència de la COPCAT, en Josep Maria López Comat, 
de totes aquestes jornades i la lectura col·lectiva del manifest. Gràcies també a totes les cooperatives i cooperativistes que participaran en aquesta setmana, en tots aquests actes, on parlarem d'economia circular, de transició energètica, de transport sostenible i de models alimentaris. Jordi, Judit, Arnau, Lluís, Àngel, Montserrat, Núria, Arnau, Pere, Francesc, Josep, Antoni, Engràcia, Gemma, etcètera, etcètera. Gràcies per la vostra participació. I gràcies al James Galbraith, a l'Oriol Amat i a en Jaume Oller, que se faran la primera sessió parlant d'aquest pacte per la vida i de l'acció climàtica des del punt de vista cooperatiu. Aviam, no vull oblidar-me de totes les persones que estem intentant fer créixer el cooperativisme federat des de la creença que el bé comú, el suport mutu i la cura del nostre entorn són les bases de la transformació. Una transformació que a més crec que és prioritària a qualsevol interès individual o sectorial perquè sense aquesta transformació la vida digna no seria possible. Ni vull oblidar-me tampoc de les persones que des de les cooperatives, des de les entitats d'impuls del cooperativisme arreu del territori i també des de les administracions sumem un esforç indispensable per la força d'aquest cooperativisme i per la vertebració de la nostra societat. No podem començar, per desgràcia, aquesta setmana del cooperativisme sense recordar els greus efectes de la pandèmia que hem viscut, que encara estem vivint, d'aquest confinament, sense recordar per descomptat éssers estimats que moltes de nosaltres hem perdut d'una manera especialment trista, sense un comiat, sense una abraçada, sense un petó, sense recordar la duresa d'un confinament en soledat o fent de mestres dels infants o en moltes altres situacions, poques d'elles fàcils. Sense recordar la por d'aquelles que han treballat cara a cara amb un virus del que encara en sabem molt poc, l'ofec de les cooperatives que baixàvem la persiana durant mesos, les cabrioles que hem fet per aguantar o l'angoixa mentre exprenem una vegada més l'enginy per reinventar-nos. Sense recordar, per desgràcia, i una vegada més, que hem passat aquesta difícil situació a la presó o a l'exili, doncs els cooperativismes, cooperativistes, les cooperativistes, independentment del que sentim, sabem que el futur s'escriu des del diàleg. Introduïes, Laura, una mica problemes, pactes per la vida, situacions. El model global actual prioritza l'acumulació privada de riquesa per sobre de la vida humana i del planeta. Una nova crisi ens sorprèn, una vegada més, amb un teixit socioeconòmic greument afectat i unes polítiques en general poc orientades a l'interès general, bastant insostenibles. Per tant, entenem que cal fer valer la resiliència del cooperativisme català, la voluntat d'evolucionar cap a maneres de fer més participades, la multitud d'iniciatives sorgides des del suport mútua, des del suport mútua, les xarxes cooperatives de tota mena que han esdevingut clau i una mostra de futur per sostenir la vida, tant en l'espai productiu com en l'espai de conciliació i de les cures, conceptes productiu i reproductiu que cal urgentment reconèixer com a elements indissociables amb el consentiment de l'ecologia. Amb unes dades de l'atur que pronostiquen que s'aniran al 20%, el sistema torna a col·lapsar una dècada després i a aguditzar unes escletxes socials que no deixa d'alimentar crisi rere crisi. Destacant la davallada de vendes, l'anul·lació de projectes i contractes, les tensions de tresoreria, prop d'un 80% de les cooperatives està patint algun tipus d'afectació derivada d'aquesta pandèmia de la Covid. De la feina que hem fet, de la recollida de dades de la situació de les cooperatives, des de la Confederació de Cooperatives, hem elaborat un pla de mesures urgents que hem compartit amb Conselleria, amb Presidència, per a la reactivació econòmica del conjunt del cooperativisme, un pla que es centra en set eixos transversals, claus, que es concreten amb 39 mesures, que podeu trobar a les xarxes, que podeu trobar a la web, que s'articulen essencialment entorn de dos grans objectius. Un reactiu, atendre les necessitats més immediates a què han de fer front les empreses cooperatives. L'altre, proactiu, situar el cooperativisme en l'estratègia de repensament de l'economia del país, d'acord amb la nostra capacitat de resistència, de generació d'ocupació estable i de reinvenció, des de l'arrelament, l'experiència, el coneixement i la voluntat de generar un sistema on tothom hi tingui cabuda. Tal com deies, Laura, el lema d'aquest any del Dia Internacional de les Cooperatives 
les cooperatives i l'acció pel clima i el tretzer objectiu de desenvolupament sostenible. La situació ha estat molt dura, l'hem d'aprofitar. Parlàvem de punt d'inflexió, un punt d'inflexió per una vida que mereixem viure en plenitud, independentment del nostre origen, una vida en pau, en llibertat i amb les mateixes oportunitats per totes. No en podem dubtar ja, després de tot el que hem sentit durant el confinament i post-confinament, que els nostres valors, els valors cooperatius, estan ja en boca de moltes, que estem vivint una realitat que és incerta, que és canviant, però que és una gran oportunitat per mostrar el lideratge del cooperativisme per aquesta economia del futur. Cada dia, dèiem abans, és més evident que la sostenibilitat econòmica, social i ecològica no poden treballar-se de manera independent perquè només tenim una natura. Per tant, cal fer lectures globals. En aquest context, parlaves del pacte per una economia per la vida, que amb un nom que no pot ser més explícit, un pacte que ha de proposar un nou model econòmic per Catalunya basat en una economia plural transformadora, un pacte català per la salut col·lectiva, la democràcia econòmica, la justícia socioambiental entre agents socioeconòmics plurals, que implanti polítiques per proporcionar salut, renda, cures, habitatge, alimentació, educació i proveïments energètics i protecció social de forma universal. Els eixos d'aquest nou model econòmic han de ser clarament la democratització, la relocalització, la mutualització i la transició social de les activitats econòmiques catalanes, la no mercantilització dels serveis públics i el foment de la sobirania alimentària i energètica del conjunt del país. En aquest sentit, el cooperativisme i el conjunt de l'economia social i solidària, representats per l'ESCAT, impulsem aquest canvi i fem una crida al conjunt del sindicalisme, del mutualisme, dels moviments socials i veïnals, a les organitzacions d'autònoms i empreses, a les forces polítiques, al govern, al Parlament, per impulsar aquest pacte de país per una economia per la vida. Tot i celebrar i reconèixer sempre la feina de la Conselleria de Treball i algunes administracions locals i supramunicipals i la feina que estan aportant al cooperativisme i el seu reconeixement com a model empresarial, no podem dir que en aquest context actual, amb aquesta duresa, amb aquesta situació de post-confinament i la crisi sanitària i econòmica que estem vivint, tot això sigui suficient. Hem de reclamar i reclamem una aposta en pro de la responsabilitat social que situï el cooperativisme en sectors estratègics del país, aposta que, òbviament, n'han de col·liderar les cooperatives, però amb un total suport i visualitzant un clar gir en la mirada econòmica dels governs cap al benestar real de la societat. Perquè mantenir el sistema tal com funciona és ser còmplice de cada una de les crisis que estem vivint. Per tant, no podrem deixar de parlar i de condicionar la setmana del cooperativisme de les conseqüències de la pandèmia que estem vivint, però també hem de pensar que fa dos segles que demostrem que de cada situació difícil en sortim més fortes i més convençudes de qui som i del que creiem. Moltes gràcies, Guillem. Moltes gràcies per les teves paraules. Recordo, a més a més, que tota la informació sobre el pacte i tot el que ha estat explicant el Guillem la trobareu també a la pàgina web de la COPCAT, cooperativescatalunya, cooperativescatalunya.com. Gràcies, Guillem. I ara sí m'agradaria donar-li la paraula al Josep Vidal, director general d'Economia Social, els tercers sectors i les cooperatives i l'autoempresa. Josep, quan vulguis. Molt bé. Bon dia, Laura. Bon dia, Guillem. Bon dia... Perdona, sí. Bon dia a tothom que estigui escoltant. Moltes gràcies per convidar-nos a aquest acte. Abans que res, voldria excusar la participació del conseller en aquest acte d'obertura que dona tret a la sortida de la programació prevista per la celebració del Dia Internacional de les Cooperatives d'aquest any 2020. En guany, el tema del Dia Internacional es centra en les cooperatives i l'acció pel clima, que coincideix amb el tretzer objectiu de desenvolupament sostenible, perquè en aquesta celebració es vol posar de manifest la contribució de les cooperatives en un dels reptes més importants al qual s'enfronta el nostre planeta, que és la lluita contra el canvi climàtic. 
tenint en compte també que aquesta crisi segur, segur que també és un episodi més de la crisi climàtica que ha posat de manifest la fragilitat del model econòmic global que tots patim. L'economia social i el cooperativisme són un eix estratègic per la creació de llocs de treball estables i de qualitat arrelats al territori, això ja ho sabem i ho mantenim, i tot i la satisfacció pels avenços en la creació i consolidació d'iniciatives i projectes cooperatius, la generació d'ecosistemes i xarxa de suports locals, avui, amb la crisi actual, amb la pandèmia, som tots molt més conscients que tornem a posar sobre la taula la capacitat que tenen les cooperatives per resoldre i cobrir necessitats de forma comunitària i solidària a la situació que vivim. Des del cooperativisme, però també des de les xarxes comunitàries de suport mutu i fins i tot de la petita empresa catalana, s'han generat respostes centrades en les persones, en la vida, en l'economia productiva i reproductiva. No volem deixar de dir que el cooperativisme i l'economia social, però sobretot el cooperativisme, una vegada més heu estat, i estareu segur, però ja heu estat, a l'alçada de les circumstàncies amb els valors que us són propis i que heu construït alternatives des del territori, posant al centre amb iniciatives tan destacades com la reorganització en la distribució de productes agroecològics i de proximitat, la fabricació i distribució de mascaretes i altres materials necessaris per fer front a aquesta pandèmia, les iniciatives col·laboratives relacionades amb la cultura i amb altres sectors i el fons de finançament per projectes de l'economia social i cooperatiu que dona suport a iniciatives que s'han posat al servei de les necessitats de cada territori. Per això, doncs, donar-vos les gràcies i felicitar-vos. També, òbviament, centenars d'altres iniciatives que han col·laborat inclús de forma desinteressada per estar al costat de la gent més vulnerable en un moment tan difícil i tan crucial del nostre país i pels ciutadans del nostre país. Voldria destacar també la feina i posar en valor la feina que esteu fent des de la Confederació i de les Federacions de Cooperatives, així com de les diferents xarxes i especialment la xarxa de tenir els cooperatius i la resta d'entitats que formen part de l'ecosistema, aportant i que heu aportat solucions específiques per garantir el suport i l'acompanyament i la pervivència del sector, com el recull d'informació i mesures destinades a les empreses cooperatives, la facilitació d'eines i recursos i recolls de bones pràctiques, la diagnosi de l'estat de la situació de l'economia social que ens ha anat permetent fer un seguiment de què estava passant, la facilitació o l'adaptació de la intercooperació entre diversos projectes del territori, i el reforç, el suport i l'assessorament en l'àmbit de les empreses cooperatives. Nosaltres, des del govern, també hem impulsat mesures de suport, hem fet un pla de xoc, com coneixeu, i hem volgut posar especial èmfasi en el treball autònom, les petites empreses i sobretot les cooperatives, amb noves mesures destinades a projectes de transformació digital i nous models d'activitat, així com la línia de suport al finançament que ha sortit publicat per relativament poc. Estic convençut, estem convençuts que tenim i sobretot teniu, com deia el president, una excel·lent oportunitat per avançar amb el cooperativisme cap a una nova economia plural i transformadora, l'economia per la vida. Ens en sentim partícips i col·laborarem el cooperativisme creiem, òbviament, que ha de ser l'eix clau o un dels eixos claus per posar els valors que li són propis a l'economia i, per tant, situar la vida al centre de tota l'activitat econòmica d'aquest país. I res més, espero que les diverses xerrades que teniu previstes durant aquesta setmana siguin enriquidores i aprenem tots molt. I us desitjo un feliç dia i setmana internacional del cooperativisme. Moltes gràcies. Moltes gràcies a tu, Josep, i gràcies a tots dos, Guillem, Josep, per les vostres paraules i per ajudar-nos a obrir aquesta setmana internacional de les cooperatives, com deia el Josep, aquesta setmana dia de cop. Ara sí, la donem per inaugurada. Moltes gràcies a tots dos. Moltíssimes gràcies. Gràcies. Bé, doncs, sé que marxen el Guillem i el Josep. Sé que hi ha molta gent connectada, molta gent per aquí darrere la pantalla o davant la pantalla. 
eh, i precisament per això, per fer una mica més viva aquesta primera jornada d'inauguració i fer arribar més lluny aquesta diada, us animo a publicar a les vostres xarxes socials, a les xarxes socials de les vostres cooperatives, alguna informació sobre aquest començament de les jornades amb les etiquetes diadacoff, hashtag diadacoff, que seria la nostra, la que volem promoure des d'aquí des de la COPCAT, i també hashtag COPS Day, que seria l'etiqueta internacional. Diadacoff i COPS Day. També podeu fer servir el hashtag Acció pel Clima, que fa referència al lema i a l'ODS que es vol promoure aquest any en la seva presentació de diada internacional i d'aquesta setmana. Setmana, que ja ho han anat avançant els convidats, setmana que acabarà amb un acte de celebració, també virtual, en aquest cas, el proper dissabte 4 de juliol a les 12.30, a dos quarts d'una. No us el podeu perdre, el volem celebrar juntes amb vosaltres, volem fer una lectura col·lectiva del manifest d'aquesta diada internacional de les cooperatives i, de fet, tenim un petit testet d'aquest manifest, d'aquesta lectura. Cal continuar actuant per impulsar un nou model i revertir aquesta situació. I ho hem de fer ara. Doncs aquí hi ha el testet d'aquesta lectura col·lectiva que mostrarem el dissabte en aquest acte de celebració d'aquesta diada. Per cert, també recordar-vos que podeu consultar el programa de totes les jornades a la COPCAT, a la web de la COPCAT, cooperativascatalunya.coop. Allà trobareu a què dediquem cada jornada, com avançava abans el Guillem. Cada dia està dedicat a unes cooperatives i a un tema concret en torn a l'acció pel clima i aquest ODS, un tema concret amb una petita conversa i també amb una taula romana. A la web de la COPCAT trobareu tota la informació d'aquest programa. I res, el tot és que jo crec que després d'aquest inici, d'aquesta inauguració, no podríem seguir de millor manera que fent una primera conversa cooperativa, en aquest cas una conversa cooperativa inaugural, que serà per nosaltres un dels plats forts d'aquesta dia de cop. Es tracta de la conversa entre dos dels economistes més destacats en aquest aspecte i en aquest moment. Es tracta de James K. Galbraith, de la Universitat de Texas, i l'Oriol Amat, de la Universitat Pompeu Fabra. Aquesta conversa, que veureu ara, va tenir lloc el 23 de juny a les 4 de la tarda a Catalunya, a les 10 del matí a Texas. La vam enregistrar, s'ha subtitulat en català, i el Dreu Mauller, conseller de Copcata Cepes, va conduir-la. Anem a veure-la, us deixo amb ells i després tornem. Bon dia a tothom i moltes gràcies per estar aquí amb nosaltres celebrant el que és un dia important pel món del cooperativisme, com és el Dia del Cooperativisme a Catalunya, on tot el moviment cooperatiu català i tot el moviment cooperatiu mundial s'ajunta per celebrar aquesta efemèride i que aquest any té com a lema lluitem contra el canvi climàtic. Good morning, everybody, and thank you all for being here, celebrating with us the Cooperative Days in Catalonia. It is really strange for all uh, that we have to meet uh, by the net and we can meet together to share and celebrate this special day. But let's see the situation the other way around. Uh, as, as cooperatives, uh, frequently we look at things the other way around, then it's not that difficult. And let's think that the new scenario worldwide is an opportunity to change things and especially to transform the economy in a life-centered economy. In the last month, several initiatives 
have been launched to promote a change in the economic system. For example, the COPS Day lemma of this year, let's cooperate to fight for climate change, the manifesto of Catalan uh, social economy for a national deal for a life-centered economy, or the manifesto of the democratizing work based in democratize, decommodify, and remediate. To talk about this opportunity and how to connect and make real some of this initiative, today we have the privilege to be in the net with the two with two of the nowadays most important economists worldwide. Let me introduce you, Mr. Uriol Amat, Dean of the Barcelona School of Management, Universitat Pompeu Fragrebra, and professor there, and Mr. James K. Galbraith, professor at the University of Texas and at the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs. Good morning, Uriol and James, and thanks a lot for being here sharing your thoughts with us. Good morning. It's okay Good to be to with you. you. Yes. Let's start the conversation. First of all, I would like to invite Uriol to share with us his opinion about Catalan Social Economy Manifesto and how we can link it to other initiatives worldwide to make things happen in our country and all over the world. Uriol, the floor is yours. Good morning. Uh, for me, it's a great honor to participate in this important event, uh, a day so important for the co-ops movement in Catalonia. And also, it's a great honor to have the opportunity to talk with the Professor Gabriel. Uh, I've read uh, many uh, articles and even videos and uh, other materials. So for me, it's a great honor to have the opportunity to share thoughts with uh, Professor Gabriel. Uh, to start, uh, I, I would like uh, to point out that uh, we humans uh, have demonstrated that we can create a lot of wealth. We have demonstrated that we can create a lot of wealth in the world. But every day we have demonstrated that uh, we don't know how to distribute this wealth in a, in a good way. Uh, we, we have demonstrated that we cannot create this wealth um, just uh, looking to uh, planet will be. To, this means uh, um, having wealth, um, preserving the, the planet, but also uh, preserving not only the planet, but also uh, people, uh, society. So I think that um, the, the crisis we are facing now with the coronavirus, in some ways, it's a crisis that uh, for us is a great opportunity especially for the social economy. Uh, for um, myself, and I think uh, today in this day of the uh, cooperative uh, movement, I think that we believe that the world would be better if um, the, the economy had a great part of uh, social economies. Social economy, this means uh, co-ops, non-for-profit organizations, uh, organizations that have uh, goals, of course, that have economic goals, but also uh, goals which are balanced with uh, social goals and also sustainable goals. And I think the crisis of the coronavirus, uh, at least in Catalonia, um, are a great opportunity uh, in order to um, change a little bit the economy. Pro probably the, the market economy will not change. Um, in, in a very drastic way. But there is an opportunity to change um, important weaknesses of the economic system we have. For example, now we are asking the state to um, provide a lot of funding to, to, in order to rescue the weaker part of the economy. This means a small uh, business, people. So we are asking the state to rescue the economy. But we can, for example, when we ask uh, the state to rescue hotels, restaurants, tourism facilities, there is an opportunity to reform these tourism facilities. So um, when a company, uh, for example, a manufacturing automobile company asks for a rescue from the state, some states, some countries have, have said, well, we will rescue the, these uh, companies, but we will not rescue companies which have operations operations in 
tax haven. So this means that there is an opportunity to change the economy. And also there is a big demand in Catalonia for a different economy. Let me put you an example. And uh, at the end of uh, this short talk, I would like to know if uh, Professor Gallery think that these movements are also happening in the States. But for example, a, a big trend we see now in Catalonia is the following. I remember in our university before the year 2008, we did a study in order to know which part of consumers were um, interested in companies which are which are, are companies that uh, work for good, not only for money, uh, for dividends for the shareholders, but also for a sustainable um, growth, for a social uh, growth and so on. Before the year 2008, a study we did in our university um, showed that less than 10% of consumers were interested in that. They didn't care if a, a product that they want to, to buy is produced in a country and uh, in an in undeveloped, undeveloped uh, country uh, with uh, a lot of problems with uh, uh, children working and things like that. Before the, the year 2008 was less than 10%. In the year 2015, we repeat this study and we found that this 10% grew until 30%. Some weeks ago, we have repeated the study and we have found that in Catalonia, around 50% of, of consumers are interested in consuming and buying products for, from companies which care about the planet, about sustainability, about social, about inequality, and so on. So I think this is a good opportunity for capitalism, for the market economy to change and change the only goal for profit to a triple bottom objective. This means um, having objectives connected with social, uh, this means um, people, democratization of companies and so, but also environmental. So not only looking for the economy, but also looking for the social objectives and also environmental. So I think just to finish that uh, now a lot of people in Catalonia are, um, have a clear idea that the planet is at risk, that now we have too much poverty, we must remember that in Catalonia, 30% of the population is under the level of poverty and there is too much inequality. And I think there is a great opportunity to change this. And I would like to know, uh, to ask uh, to Professor Gauri, if you think that these trends, if you are facing similar trends in the States. Okay, well, yeah. first of all, let, let me say it's a pleasure to be with you. And I, I want to add a word of uh, congratulations and support to my friends in the Catalan cooperative movement because of the work that you're doing and, and setting out uh, uh, both a line of thought and an economic model, which uh, I'm sure many of us elsewhere in the world will be learning from uh, over the months and years ahead. Um, Thank you. Let me speak uh, just a little bit about how I see the situation in this country and my remarks will be, I think, somewhat complementary. Uh, to what Professor Ahmad has just said. Uh, but I want to call attention to some, uh, first of all, the underlying situation in the United States, and secondly, uh, to the, um, uh, the peculiar changes that have happened in the last few months as a result of the, uh, of, of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the, thing, the thing that I think that is important to recognizes that what has happened in the structure of the American economy over the past 40 or 50 years is that it has developed two very different wings, if you like. Uh, a relatively small one, very advanced, uh, that is um, uh, producing uh, very uh, sophisticated products for the world market. Now you can think about aerospace, for example, in, in, uh, Boeing Aircraft Co Corporation, uh, uh, or uh, information technology companies, Silicon Valley, uh, or, or energy services. And of course, with, in recent years, the US has greatly grown its own energy uh, supply system, uh, but at a very high cost, um, both in terms of the resource cost and the environmental cost. Um, and, uh, and also financial, the financial sector was obviously very large and, and globally important uh, piece of the American economy. Uh, 
That's one piece of it. And that's a, I don't know how many, what fraction of the employment um, is in that sector, but it's not awfully large. Uh, these are, um, are, are advanced sectors that employ relatively few people uh, and of course pay them very well. And then you have the rest of the economy and the rest of the economy is overwhelmingly in the services in the in the lower what may call the lower end services but in the retail trades in restaurants and uh, uh and and many things which have become quite um uh, uh let's say have upgraded their quality as the country has grown economically. I mean, just things like coffee shops and gyms and, uh, um, and physical therapy and all kinds of things that you'll find in any American city. Um, now, uh, what has happened um, in the pandemic is that many of these um, uh, enterprises, which operate on they're, 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 they're transitory to begin with. They don't last forever and they're relatively small uh, and they employ people. And it's a lot of it is personal services. A lot of it is the contact people to people. Uh, and a lot of it requires for the businesses to be profitable as a profit making enterprise that they, that they have a lot of people in there. Uh, so a restaurant, for example, makes money by, by, through its bar, which is a place where people crowd together. Uh, and it makes money on Saturday night when people come out to dinner and the rest of the week, it's not so much making money. Uh, and, you know, and you think about a lot of things which have also developed and music festivals and uh, all kinds of things which require people, uh, sporting events to be, uh, these are big pieces of the economy as well as travel destinations and resorts and spas and casinos and everything else. And this is a very large piece of the economy of a, of a high income country and that they don't employ high income people, but it's, it, it's a, it's a system which depends upon people being willing to spend discretionary income. Uh, okay. So what has happened in the pandemic is precisely that willingness has gone away. Uh, and both the willingness and the, um, and and the ability to you to to use the facilities that are there because of public health considerations. So even now we've been under intense pressure to so-called reopen the economy, and restaurants can operate at 25 or 50 percent of their capacity. And even if they can get 50 percent of their normal capacity in there, can they make money that way? It's very difficult because 50 percent is not 100 percent, which they were very making only small amounts of money before. Uh, and then you think about all the other things that, uh, that are just basically in the same situation. Uh, and even if you open them up and said, okay, you can have full capacity, would the customers come? Well, we had this experience. The United States actually flushed the economy with cash. We had uh, a savings rate of almost one third of income in April. Uh, poverty rates has been discovered went down in the United States in the pandemic. Um, it was a system which people were given money, more money than they could make by working. Uh, it was 600 extra dollars a week, 2,400 a month. This is, this is substantial for a service sector worker. Um, it's very substantial. Um, but so they have some put aside and they were able to make their rent and this was all helpful. But are they willing to go out to a restaurant? Are they willing to go out uh, and, um, you know, to, to uh, uh, are going to keep their gym membership? Are they going to keep going out to sporting events? Of course, they're not. And it's not just because they're uh, wary of the of the health implications. It's also because they're wary of the economic future. They don't know whether they're going to get a job back. And so they've got this little extra money. They're storing it up quite sensibly. Well, what does that mean for all of these businesses? Well, all over America, uh, and certainly my hometown and everything, every place I know, they're boarded up. Uh, some of them are reopening, and but they don't know how long they can last, and others just aren't reopening at all. And this is where the idea of cooperate of a cooperative movement comes in. This is where it's not just that people, as you said, I think it's what you say is true, are more conscious of the need to support nonprofit enterprise and cooperative enterprises and so forth. It's also that those enterprises, if they are, they find a way to sustain them, they're more sustainable. Right? They are, uh, you can work out some system to keep them going and you have to do it if you want to have this kind of enterprise around at all. Otherwise, the cities and towns are just going to end up being um, essentially uh, 
and, and there'd be a little bit of like ghost ghost towns. So if you want to bring people back to work, you've got to find a mechanism that will uh, be economically viable. And for the moment, the profit mechanism isn't that viable. Uh, maybe it will come back. Um, maybe the, the, the pandemic will fade in two or three years. But two or three years is a lifetime for a small business, you know, for a, a, a laundromat or a, 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 a corner store. Uh, they can't hold out that long. They can hold out for four or five months, maybe. But but get to the end of this year, and you're going to see terrific crisis in this sector. It's already developed, um, and that's what you don't want to see. And so it strikes me that what you're doing uh, by building a model of cooperatives is not only important for the social reason, but it may be the only way out uh, economically uh, that will enable us to have all of these amenities and all of this employment and all of these sectors, which have been the fabric of our lives for such a long time now. That's interesting. And um, um, concerning what you are uh, mentioning about this uh, tremendous uh, um, amount of uh, money provided uh, for, by the Federal Reserve and for um, by the, by, actually, by the Congress, yeah. The yeah. Congress. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, in Europe, and especially in, in, in all Europe, but also in Catalonia, we have a big debate uh, concerning the uh, universal income topic. And uh, the Spanish government, uh, just a few weeks ago, has approved uh, something similar to a universal income. It, it's not universal, it's just for poor people. Mm -hmm. But this will arrive to nearly uh, 50, 60 percent of um, um, poor families, mm -hmm. and will be uh, so. It will not be universal like you have in Alaska. I, I, I have read that you have something similar to a universal income in Alaska. Yeah, only, be, only because of the oil. Of the oil, that's right. Yeah, right, right. That's right. But in Europe, uh, there are um, surveys which show that. Uh, around 80% of uh, Europeans are uh, in favor of something similar to a universal income. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, um, for example, in Catalonia or in Spain, we have no money for that now, but um, there is a majority of population who think that uh, this is an interesting trend. And uh, from year after year, uh, the government must increase the money um, invested in this kind of uh, income. So my question for you is, uh, is this trend similar in the United States? Are you moving to um, a, a system, not universal, but a system where poor people can get uh, uh, money enough to live, uh, well, uh, equ uh, something equivalent to the minimum salary? Um, well, first of all, the question of where the, you say there's no money, there's only reason that Spain doesn't have the money for this, the Catalonia is, is that you're part of the Euro system. So you're, you're, yes. you're, you're subject to an external constraint. Not true in the United States. The US government can and does uh, send out checks as much as it wants. It just showed that it could send out two or three trillion dollars. Uh, and uh, and there they are. It's in, it arrives in your bank account and poof, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's done. So. Uh, that's, an, that's an advantage of having a full control of your own monetary system. On the other hand, if you're not a very large country, as, uh, as Spain was not before the, uh, the, the euro, you're subject to a depreciation risk. So there's a trade-off there. Yeah. Um, the, it's a great advantage of having, a, having a, the reserve currency being the, one of yes. the large, very large countries. But uh, come to the question of the universal basic income. It has acquired a certain amount of impetus, uh, and that was the, largely the work of the presidential campaign. So we had a rather, uh, you know, a, a marginal candidate, Andrew Yang, who was a, yeah. nevertheless a very articulate uh, advocate of this idea. I have always been opposed to it. I have always been skeptical of it. Uh, yeah. And my view is that it doesn't quite fit with, uh, it doesn't fit well with American culture, which is a very work-oriented culture, yeah. and that it runs the risk of undermining strong social institutions that we already have, in particular social security, uh, which is work-based. Uh, and also, it is universally inclusive. In fact, you don't even have to be a citizen or a resident. If you come uh, and give a talk at the in, at American University, they will give you a social security number. <laughs> we'll take some of that 
in payroll tax and credit your account and you know it's, it's, you do that enough and you'll get a benefit at, at, at retirement time so that it's, it's it's a completely open system social security um, yeah. and i wouldn't want to see that I, I think building on that is a stronger basis than universal basic income that said uh what happened in the uh, in the spring uh, was essentially uh, a, a payment based upon taxpayer status, actually tax filing. And if you hadn't filed, they set up a mechanism where you could file. So anybody who was a bona fide U.S. taxpayer could get a check. That's as, about a, as universal as you can do on, on very short notice. Um, uh, it doesn't go to people who are undocumented, but uh, that's about the only group that it didn't go to in the end. Um, the... Uh, over the long period, though, I think this is not a really good alternative uh, to uh, having a, an employment-based system, a job guarantee. Uh, and I think a job guarantee actually dovetails better with the cooperative movement, because what you want to do is to create uh, a, a way you can support people employing in doing things. Uh, and those things can be things that would ordinarily have been prior times have been in the public sector in all kinds of public service jobs and schools and libraries and uh, public health and uh, all kinds of things. And we need lots of people in public health or and it can also they could also conceivably be in cooperative endeavors that were partly local government and partly private sector so that you have someone who's basically in a partnership. Uh, with with the community to maintain all the services that were previously provided purely by the private sector, but are not viable. Um, and that way you could, uh, it, once you have people employed, of course they're earning an income and then they can enjoy the services. We are probably uh, leaning, um, again, to come back to the politics of it, the difficulty of what I'm proposing is that it's uh, this idea is, is simply harder to do. It requires more administrative capacity. And the tendency in the Congress is just to write checks. They love writing checks. It's easy. You hand the job to the Treasury and they send out the checks. Um, and it can be done fast. And that's that's those are advantages. But at the same time, they're they, they aren't gonna solve this problem. You can and and the, the we're seeing it now that people have money in the bank which they're quite sensibly not spending. And therefore the businesses and the jobs are not coming back. That's the issue. And that's going to take some time for people to realize that they have to do something more. And at that point, I think universal basic income is less attractive. Job guarantee is more attractive. Job guarantee plus a cooperative framework yeah. uh, for, the, for the enterprise. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, and yeah. Um, talking about opportunities uh, in Catalonia, we see another opportunity for the, the co-ops movement and the social economy. And mm -hmm. um, let me tell you the, the, this opportunity. And just, uh, I would like to know also if, it's the, if, if you have a similar trend in the United States. For example, uh, after the crisis of 2008, the co-ops uh, cooperative movement demonstrated that uh, the, uh, the co-ops had a higher survival rate during the crisis of 2008. Mm -hmm. um, while the rest of the economy, the private uh, companies, uh, listed uh, companies, uh, and, and other public companies, for example, listed in the stock exchange and so, they, they, a lot of companies uh, went in bankruptcy. But this was not the case in the co-op movement. Of course, there were, there were some cases of uh, co-ops that uh, couldn't mm -hmm. continue, but uh, the COPS uh, movement was the only part of the economy, at least in Catalonia, the only part of the economy that could create employment and could create more COPS. And now, uh, the, in the last weeks, I have been studying information about COPS in Catalonia, about COPS, uh, bank, banks, and so I And I have uh, found the same evidence. So there is um, um, a higher survival rate in the COPS movement when we are in the middle of a crisis. The reason for that, I have not studied the reasons now, but I studied the reasons in the, during the crisis of 2008 and the following years. And the reason for that was that uh, where then the, this economy uh, has do, does uh, less speculation, 
uh, less risky operations. Uh, they don't invest, for example, when you talk about banking, for example, they don't invest in the derivatives, uh, speculate to, to complex uh, financial instruments. So they are more stable. And uh, as now we are in the middle of another crisis, uh, it seems that uh, this is the case again. And my question is uh, uh, for you, uh, do you think that this uh, is the case in, in the United States? So that the COPS movement is more stable um, preserve more the employment than the rest of the economy? And I'm not sure where I would look for it. Um, I, the, uh, I, I would distinguish between the cooperatives, well, uh, that are, are the, such as the, the cooperative grocery store that I belong to in, in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Uh, I'll put a word in for Wheatsville Co-op, a very great institution in my neighborhood. Um, yeah. The uh, and and a much larger nonprofit sector, which of course is a very large share of higher education, of healthcare, and of, of course the and all the uh, you know, the religious communities, um, and provides something like something above eight percent of employment in the United States is in that sector. Uh, so it's a very very substantial thing. Um, and actually, I actually think there are reasons why both of them are likely to be more stable in a crisis. You gave the, uh, a quite a number of them. The basic one is that they won't, they're not obliged to maintain a rate of return for private investors, right? That's the whole point of a cooperative is that's not what you're doing. You're maintaining a going concern for the use of your, of your owners who are your customers. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, of course, that's going to be more stable because the whole point of a financially based system is that you have to meet the rate of return criterion. And if you don't, uh, they put you out of business and sell you off to somebody who will either liquidate you or transform you somehow. Uh, and that will much less likely to happen to a, to a cooperative. So yes, it's a more stable thing. Uh, at the same time, uh, it needs to have some, you know, to have a cooperative movement, you need to have something financing the cooperatives uh, that is dedicated to that. Uh, and that's that's where we need to do a lot of work. Um, and I, I, I have a feeling that the way to do this is, uh, in the U.S. is is the way we have we have municipal power companies and municipal uh, water wastewater companies and this kind of thing, as well as uh, public transportation. So a lot of things are actually done uh, on a social basis in the U.S. Not very few of them at the federal level, but a great many of them at the at, at the municipal level, um, and uh, even in so supposedly conservative places like Texas, I, I pay my my power bill to the city of Austin, for example, my water bill. Uh, these are uh, well established and have been for a century. Uh, and I think that's again as you go, as you go forward, the question is how do you, how do you build on that model and how do you expand it and how do you make more of the economy sustainable uh, when you know that you can't. Uh, it's not going to be. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to meet the criterions of, criteria of profitability that the financial sector demands. And when you look around the world, uh, and you look in particularly at the Asian economies, uh, I think you'll see a lot of uh, enterprises which are either cooperatives formally or effectively function like cooperative because they are supported by, 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 uh, by institutions that are more concerned about keeping them going than they are necessarily about making a certain rate of return off of them. Japan, China, uh, and you see where, where, what's keeping all of these service sector uh, enterprises going when they're competing with each other. They're, they're basically look like perfect competition in the textbooks and that's a zero profit operation. Uh, and the answer is well, they have, they have uh, support from, from the financial sector, from the state owned banks or uh, the, the municipally owned banks and so forth who are, who are prepared to keep lending to them if they need it. Uh, and so they keep going. Uh, and that's what you need to think about uh, as we kind of think about what the effects of this pandemic are on the way in which we live. Um, so I think that, that there's a there's a future. Uh, the, one of the and the reason I was really interested in doing this and responded very quickly when you when you invited me was yeah. it does seem to me that this is the model. This is a very much the model that we need to be studying and and learning from concretely how it works and how it can be made to to expand because we're going to need it. That's, that's interesting. Let me make a, a prediction. You know that economists, we are very bad uh, doing predictions. 
but mm. I would like to share with you a prediction, and I would like to know if you mm -hmm. um, have a similar idea or not about the future. Let, let's think about uh, 10 years from now. My prediction mm -hmm. is that uh, the part of the economy which will be um, social, that means co-ops, non-for-profit associations, my prediction is that will be much higher than now. In, in Catalonia, depending on how you measure, depending on the industries, but um, the social part of the economy is, depending on how you measure, it's between 5 and 10% of the economy, depending on, on how you measure. For example, if you talk about agriculture, it's nearly 30, 40%. But, uh, so my prediction would be that in 10 years, the social economy will have a bigger share of, of, the, of all the economy. And also that uh, the economy, which um, is um, participated by a public-private partnership, with more collaboration between public and private companies, will have a, a higher share of the total economy. And that the, the part of the economy which will be private, all private, will be more, uh, will, a, a big part of that will have a, a bigger conscious about the planet, will being about social, environmental, things like that. So in some ways, uh, this maybe is a dream more than a prediction, is that in 10 years, we will be much better than now in this, uh, in how the economy will be um, um, uh, participated by the different types of economy. Um, do you agree with this prediction? How you see the future in 10 years? Well, if, if we're wise and react to the situation in a sensible way, then you will be right. Um, I can see other scenarios. Uh, it is clear that it uh, happened after the last crisis and will happen unless the tendency toward is checked uh, in, the next, in the next few months in the United States is that we'll see a lot of uh, private equity firms going in to buy up distressed assets distressed real estate, distressed commercial office buildings, distressed housing, distressed businesses, you name it. And they're looking at a great opportunity uh, and uh, lots of things can be just liquidated. Uh, and what happens then uh, is not pleasant. Uh, I think that we may have to go through that crisis before we recognize that we're going to have to reorganize ourselves because uh, frankly, I, I thought that perhaps people would pick up on this uh, need to reorganize early. Uh, right now, the capacity to fool yourself oneself is really very strong. And people are starting to continually talk about reopening and getting back to normal as though the previous situation was actually normal. The previous situation was not normal. It was very, if you like, efficient. The U.S. actually had recovered from the financial crisis. Our unemployment rate was below 4%. Uh, we had you know, a, a general feeling of, of, of prosperity. It wasn't everywhere, but it wasn't. Uh, we were not like Italy or Greece or, or, or Spain, for that matter, with, uh, with great difficulty of recovering from the crisis. We did recover. But, we, but the recovery, the, assist, the structure was very fragile. And this is the point people need to understand. Uh, and the big foundations that I mentioned earlier of the US economy, the aerospace, for example, is in big trouble. And it's true of Airbus in Europe as well. If you're building airplanes, who is going to buy an airplane? Half of them are on the ground. I want to buy an airplane, I'll get a used one. They're perfectly good. And I'll get it cheap. I'm not going to, Airbus I know is down to maybe a couple of months of aircraft production. I don't know what's happening to Boeing. It's already in trouble. Um, and you know, you think about oil. Oh, well, okay, we should we should be moving away from oil anyway. But the fact is, the U.S. was heavily reliant on fracking at sixty dollars a barrel. The price is thirty, so the wells are 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 not there. No new ones are being drilled, and the ones that are there may be capped. And when they're capped, they go away. They don't. They, you can't get them back. So uh, lots and lots of things are going to dawn on people that there really, there really is a lot of trouble in the economy and we have to be reorganizing in some sustainable and sensible way. So if we do, then you will be right. Uh, and we'll come back and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, did we make a bet? I'll pay off with, with great, with great <laughs> pleasure in, in, in 10 years when you, when you remind me what it is that I owe you. 
<laughs> I'm 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 really sorry, but because it's it's a so interesting conversation, but uh, time is running out, and I would like to use this little time left to thanks again, Mr. Amat and Mr. Galbraith for for sharing their thoughts with us. It was a pleasure for us uh, hearing you. And just to conclude, I would like to invite you to summarize this conversation in a tweet. As you think about it, I will share my. My conclusion, my own conclusion. Uh, I think uh, what what I have heard, I think change is necessary worldwide, and let's cooperate for change to see Uriol's predictions in ten years. <laughs> what about yours, Uriol? Well, uh, to, uh, just to write a tweet, uh, I would say that. Um, in the middle of a crisis, uh, there are great opportunities uh, for a, a better economy. And this means an economy centered in people, an economy centered in planet well-being. Planet well-being means uh, not only sustainability, but also uh, people, organizations, countries. So we have a great opportunity for that. And I would say that in the cooperative economy to come, which I hope will be the case, uh, we will have long conversations like this one, which we will not need to summarize with tweets. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we arrive at the end. Thank you very much to all for being here. I moltes gràcies a tothom els que heu estat participant. Invitem a tots a continuar participant en aquesta setmana de celebracions del moviment cooperatiu català per celebrar el COPS Day 2020. Thank you very much, Mr. Galbraith. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. Mr. Mr. Amat. Uh, you're welcome. See you soon. Pleasure. Quina conversa més interessant. Jo no sé com serà, no sé previ, el futur d'aquí 10 anys, però sens dubte aquest és un bon inici aquestes jornades per donar-nos elements per reflexionar i per, també per, per l'acció. No? Jo sí que us convido a fer tweets, no? com deia el James Galbraith, eh, us convido a fer tweets amb els hashtags Via de Cop i Cop Day per, per seguir promovent aquestes jornades, unes jornades que ja sabeu, inaugurem avui i acaben amb la celebració del Dia Internacional de les Cooperatives el dissabte, a dos quarts d'una. Per cert, abans no ho he dit, però si voleu participar d'aquesta jornada de celebració i d'aquesta cluenda que farem dissabte amb la lectura completa d'aquest manifest i també amb alguna sorpresa que, que no avançarem, us heu d'inscriure a la pàgina web de la COPCAT, que és, ja ho dic, però sempre ho he de mirar, cooperativescatalunya.com. Eh, estem arribant al final de la jornada d'avui, d'aquesta primera sessió inaugural. Demà tornarem, tornarem amb, amb el format que, que ja mantindrem fins divendres, aquest format d'una hora, d'onze a d'onze, on tindrem primer una conversa cooperativa i després una taula rodona que hem anomenat eh, Passem a l'acció. És com, com li direm aquesta secció. Com dèiem, cada dia estarà dedicat a un tema diferent en torn al, al canvi climàtic o a l'acció pel clima. Demà tractarem l'economia circular. Obrirem amb una conversa cooperativa amb en Jordi Rojas, de la cooperativa Opcion, que no som responsable, i seguirem amb aquesta secció Passem a l'acció a la segona part de la jornada, que serà un espai per conèixer actuacions concretes de tres cooperatives catalanes en torn a l'economia circular. Concretament, les cooperatives Carbon Vivo, Aigua Sol i la càmera arrossera del Montsià i secció de Tèrmic. Ara sí, eh, donem per inaugurar aquestes jornades. O ens reemplacem a, a demà, a les 11 del matí, novament aquí, per celebrar aquesta dia de còpia, aquesta setmana de, de les cooperatives. Moltes gràcies a Albert Soler de la cooperativa a la taula que hi ha a l'altra banda, a, fent tot el suport tècnic, i gràcies a totes per haver-nos seguit. Fins demà. Gràcies.